Oh, it's been a while. Oh, we're back to talking about video games. <sighs> All right. Here we go. Super Smash Brothers is a little-known underground indie title developed by one Masahiro Sakurai and no one else. Just him. It's a fighting game he made in a year without sleeping, and he still hasn't slept to this day. One day, Sakurai decided he wanted to attempt the world record of angering as many people possible at one time, so he came up with DLC fighters. Smash Brothers currently holds an undefeatable title belt for most toxic online community, where people scream at each other and argue about who has a better chance of making it into the game, the Heavy from Team Fortress 2 or the goddamn Pillsbury Doughboy. The one that most people agree with might shock you. Wondering if there's a competitive Smash Brothers player living near you? Well, there's this neat little website that'll tell you. Soccer guy, stop giving us anime sword fighters. Nobody wants any anime sword fighters. Soccer guy, please give us these anime sword fighters. We need more anime sword fighters. Oh my god. Oh, video games suck, man. I gotta, I gotta talk about a movie sometime or something. Regardless of the community, Smash Brothers is one of the most unique and influential styles of any fighting game out there. So influential, in fact, it's definitely spawned a lot of look-alikes and wannabes, and it looks alike we're gonna take a gander at some of those today. Now, playing a bunch of these by myself is just absolutely soul-crushing. So I've invited my good friend, Frito the Demon, to slowly die along with me. Say hi, Frito. Please, he's been keeping me in his basement for three months now. He only gives me water and milkshakes for some reason. I need somebody to call the cops, okay? Please. Oh, <laughs> that, that Frito, he's such a kidder. I'm gonna shut your mouth or I swear to God I'm feeding you cat food for dinner tonight. Now before we get into some new stuff, I'd like to track back to some old stuff. Last time we covered Cartoon Network's Punch Time Explosion, PlayStation All-Stars, and Brawlhalla. Now the other two are still very dead games, but when it came to Brawlhalla, I said, now, Brawlhalla is still in very early beta, and it's hard to review a game in beta, because things that are problematic now may or may not be problems later. Now, ignoring the fact that I used to consider myself a reviewer, while only writing a paragraph about the game and saying things equivalent to, The game is fun. I'd like to take another look at Brawlhalla now that it's out of beta, because boy has it had one hell of a life, and you guys really didn't like my original Brawlhalla takes. Brawlhalla had a full release in 2017 and went completely free to play, and, as far as I can tell, didn't give me any sort of reward for buying the game before it went free to play, so that's cool. Thanks, Brawlhalla. I'll go f myself. Around 2018, the studio behind Brawlhalla, Blue Mammoth, was acquired by Ubisoft, who helped push Brawlhalla into the freemium limelight. The beta game launched with only, like, uh, 14 characters? But the final game has 53, but like 44 of them are locked behind a $20 DLC pass. Now, I'd have to be brain dead stupid in order to spend any more money on this game after not getting anything for buying the Founders Pack, right? I'm typing in my credit card information right now. What's wrong with you? Uh, well, how long you got? What, the live? <laughs> how long you got to sit and listen to everything wrong with me? <laughs> I think we can all agree that one of the most insane things about Smash Brothers is all these different characters coming together. Like, <laughs> hello, Minecraft Steve standing next to Metal Gear Solid Snake? <laughs> That's so silly. These things are so different. Well, how's this for different? Rayman, Pearl from Steven Universe, Rick from The Walking Dead, Kung Fu Panda's Poe, Shovel Knight, Tomb Raider's Laura Croft, Heat Blast from Ben 10, Finn from Adventure Time, Hellboy and WWE Best Girl Asuka are all in Brawlhalla. With the exception of Rayman, these aren't full DLC characters. They're just skins that go over characters already in the game, and you have to spend real money to unlock them. Each skin is about 10 bucks each, or 300 mammoth coins. I just got paid $300 for doing an event. Should I spend that $300 on mammoth coins for Brawlhalla? <laughs> you could also do literally anything else. I could, I could use that money to buy cocaine and I'd probably get more longevity out of it. So after all that time in the oven and getting adopted by a new publisher daddy, how's Brawlhalla now? Well, Frito and I leapt back in to check it out. Two, one, <laughs> Look at you and I immediately did the exact same thing. Oh yeah, this is, I forgot, I hate this game. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was a little hesitant to spend $20 on it. There's no C-Stick, and I hate it. You're right, there's no C-Stick. Right. This is actually awful. 
I, I, I'm kind of, I'm slowly getting back into it. I, I'm, you know, it's like, uh, it's like arthritis. It never really leaves you. <laughs> All right. So I have an, I have an up air that's also my nair, a down air, a forward air. I have a jab and a dash attack. No. I feel like this takes an, a ridiculous amount of focus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just to understand the controls, honestly. Oh, can, I can't side be in the air. Yeah, I just I do that. Yeah, it's just the up B. Oh my what god, I don't know what the hell that the was. Well, I guess I win. <laughs> I got robbed. After a few more games, how to play kind of came back to me, and I started to enjoy myself. Now, I'm not going to cover everything I already talked about in the last video because most of that stuff is unchanged and a lot of the original stuff I have to say remains the same. Like, I'm still really not a fan of having stock icons and info up in the corner. I really wish it were just at the bottom of the screen. It's just easier for me to glance at it that way. Not only that, but using colors for damage taken instead of percentages still really bothers me. Like. How do you keep track of when stuff kills? That's so frustrating to me. Looking back at my original video, I praised the gameplay, and it still holds up. Matches are fast and fun, and the combat has a lot of fluidity. You can come back all the way from the edge of the stage if you've got a firm grasp on the controls, and they've done a good job of improving the general weight of all the characters. Though they haven't changed the gameplay much, they did add a bunch of new game modes. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, bomb skip ball, beach brawl, buddy, capture the flag, Temple Climb, Morph, Showdown. I don't understand how this works. Never mind, I understand how it works. <laughs> All right, now, now we have Capture the Flag. I can't even imagine what Capture the Flag is gonna look like with two people. No, I threw it at you. <laughs> So this, this is how I defend. <laughs> I just, I just stand in the way. <laughs> so this is WWE, huh? This is what they do there? <laughs> this is what The Rock was cooking the whole time? I can smell it. I can't get the table to do anything. What the fuck happened? That's not <laughs> how tables work. Hold on. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> The table sits you to the moon! Weirdly enough, we spent like 30 minutes playing the soccer mode. Come on. Come on. Eh. No! <laughs> no. I'm yes! So mad. I did nothing. Oh! No! <laughs> Hell. Oh, I had no! it. <laughs> you have to touch it. Wow. Please. Yeah, <laughs> your angle sucks. <laughs> what the fuck? Dude, I'm just a natural. It's all that rocket league in your blood. Good run. Dude, I did not play that much rocket league. Like, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. No. No. <laughs> No! Was... Like, it's so hard just to turn around on the spot and then attack in the other direction. Oh my Hell god, yeah. the fucking rocket but... staff is kind of ridiculous for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I thought the spear was going to be enough. <laughs> well, this game mode's ruined. One of my complaints from last time is that all the characters feel kind of similar, and that feeling isn't completely gone, but they have done work to improve animations and make individual characters feel somewhat different from each other. The main problem you're always going to have in a game like this is giving characters personality. Like with Smash, these are all characters we already know. Their personality and appeal comes from their appearances in their individual games. But we don't know anything about Bodvar. There's nothing about him that draws me to him. I ended up mainly sticking to Rayman because I like Rayman. And this shark dude, because he reminded me a lot of street sharks. And then I found out he had this ridiculous move. Like, like <laughs> look at that. Chris, I'm having fun. 
<laughs> I have no options against you. <laughs> Look at how wide this is. I like how this game more or less functions on the honor system that you shouldn't use your side B just to kill somebody immediately. <laughs> it's so unfair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, GG, man. <laughs> Something I feel I really didn't explain well enough last time is the weapon system. Every character gets two weapons from a pool of 13 total weapons. They technically are not divided into heavy or light weapons, so I was totally wrong on that in my initial video. So every character is gonna share some moves with another character. The only thing that really sets them apart from each other is their unique special moves. Since my initial review, Brawlhalla has since been ported to pretty much every platform including mobile, and Ubisoft claims it averages about 50 million players a week. Is Brawlhalla a bad game? No. It's fun. It's just not as competitively engaging or balanced as I like my fighting games to be. I'm a bit of a sweaty loser when it comes to fighting games, so I don't get much enjoyment out of this. But I encourage everyone to give it a shot. I mean, it is free after all. All right, I just spent like eight minutes on Brawlhalla alone, okay? It's gotten one, two, three, four, Okay, five, five pages in my script compared to the original, like, paragraph I gave it in my old video. So, are we good now, YouTube comments, huh? Did, did I atone for my sins? Can I move on? We're good? Good? Okay, cool. Yeah, all right, moving on. You know, you can call me a cringe neckbeard loser, but I think crossovers are really cool. Seeing Spider-Man punch the shit out of Nemesis from Resident Evil? Hell yeah, dude. I live for that. It's got to be one of the biggest attractions for people to get into games like Smash Brothers. You know, you come for the wacky Nintendo characters, but stay for the really technical gameplay. But what if you had access to a ton of really marketable characters, but did absolutely nothing with them? Well, then you get a game like Bounty Battle. Bounty Battle is like some sort of otherworldly anomaly. I mean, it's a game produced by only two people. Francois Von Aureli, who did all the art, and Grégory Laporte, who did all the programming. The game started its life on a site called Fig, which is its pretty much like a Kickstarter sort of thing. The most interesting part of this for me is how they already had access to all these licensed characters from the get-go. Like, how the hell did they even do that? They're a two-person development team with no experience making games. This is their first game! What the hell kind of crazy high persuasion check did you roll to get 22 licenses? This game launched with no online multiplayer. It uses Steam's Remote Play Together function, which basically requires you to, like, stream your computer to your friend, and then streams their control back to your computer. Which is, mm, it's just a joy to use for a fighting game. I think, no, I think we're together. I, th I can't control the menu. I think, I think, I think we're together. Just go to local play. Wait, so what, do I close my game? Why are you closing your game? Oh shit, I, I'm, s I'm sorry. I'm still trying to figure out how this works. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna invite you, and then you'll see what it's trying to do. I'm now seeing what it's trying to do. It also, for some reason, was like picking up both of my microphones, but like out of sync. I, I don't really know how to describe that, but you can kind of hear it in the background here. <laughs> There's only four people on the leaderboard that I hit by accident. <laughs> Why is leaderboard bound to enter? Dude, I bet, I bet we can do better than that. One is a zero, so yeah. <laughs> all right, man, you ready for all these controls? Chris, I already hate this. <laughs> Super easy. Here they are. Now then, the first thing you're to show you is the interface. Small zero. 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 X and Y are your tilts and smash attacks, but they're split up between two different buttons, and there's no forward or backward attacks, only up and down. Holy shit, I never want to hear anyone ever complain about Smash 4 Cloud ever again. But where are our special moves? Why, those are split up between the right trigger and pressing X and Y at the same time, of course. Why couldn't rolling be bound to L? Why did it have to be B? Why can't I change this? Why did you spread the controls for your game to like six different buttons and button combinations when they could have been two buttons like Smash Brothers? Another super interesting aspect about Bounty Battle is the stages. They have these Smash-like open arenas, but the game is definitely not built with those in mind. There is 
no time to recover when you get knocked off the stage. <laughs> you just can't do anything. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like it doesn't allow you any time to react when you get off the stage. You, you just die. That's your option. <laughs> Take the hedge guard, bro. Uh, I mean, apparently, like, what's the point of having it up B if it won't give you time to react? What the f- I literally could not jump. <laughs> you can't do it, anything it, about it. It, 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 it didn't fall, allow me to do anything. You fall like a brick attached to a sack of other bricks. If you want to get any enjoyment at all, you've got to stick to closed arenas, but those have problems of their own. I literally, I, I can't do shit. I literally can't do anything <laughs> to escape this. <laughs> they banned stages for that in Smash Bros. Worse than any of these problems, though, is the gameplay design choices for this game. It's crazy, because, like, hits don't last forever, but also there's not a lot of knockback. So it's like, you don't go anywhere, you just yeah. get combo to oblivion. You know, what's worse than the hit stun, though, is that some characters have a ridiculous amount of end lag on them. <laughs> yeah, for real. And there's no justifiable reason for it, either. Spammer, I barely pressed the fucking button. If you if you like tap it in quick succession, it'll it'll like get you immediately. Yeah, you're right. It's up to your opponent to find a way around spam gameplay. It's not up to the game to limit you from doing. Oh uh, yeah, I think it's ridiculous. It's also super unfair for the game to be like, oh, you're spamming when there's only like four moves. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> The game really wants you to build up bounty bucks, which can be used to buy minions, which are like little assist trophies, except they don't do anything. What? Are, like, what do they do? <laughs> they don't do anything. Oh. Oh, now he's he's doing something. Your one isn't doing shit though. Oh well, she just healed you. I've never seen so many weird mismatch concepts that just do not work well with each other. It presents itself like some sort of 2D fighter, but arranges itself like Smash Brothers with moves and controls to fit neither one of these things. And you know, it wants you to play by its complicated rule set, but most of our matches just ended up going like this. I just ma mash the X button, and then hit the roll button, and then keep mashing the X button. Yeah. <laughs> And don't jump, that's your problem, is you want to jump. The entire game just feels uninspired and lifeless. Most of these characters just feel like paper dolls with no emotion or thought put into their design. But then you have some, like, Super KO man who's incredibly fluid. It's almost as if they did all the work on him first, and then was just like, God damn, that was a lot of work. I don't want to do that 22 more times. Most of these flaws can be looked past if you were just really looking for something new and different to play. Except there's one minor... Tiny, teensy little thing. There's fall damage. Now, I, I have to ask you. Okay, this is the trailer they used for their Kickstarter. Alright? Now, now, this is the final game. Kickstarter? Final game. C can you tell me any difference here? They raised $40,000. $40,000, and the only developer was Greg. Where the hell did that $40,000 go? What was the point of it? Oh my god, some poor bastard paid $3,000 for this. I think we could get the $7 refund. <laughs> Bounty Battle is sincerely the worst game I have ever played for this show, and I mean that wholeheartedly. I don't give review scores for games, but if I did, this would be a 1 out of 10 very easily. The game launched with no story mode despite one being promised in the Kickstarter, and has been left completely abandoned. The lead developer for the game, Greg, has said on Steam that it's dead and he's left the company. And the other guy, Francois, has moved on to making some whack-ass card game. So if you invested money on this, sue. J j just sue them. They deserve it.